So you have seen uh, flip-flops and how they can store zeros or ones and you have arranged these flip-flops together to form registers that can actually store more than one bit, like maybe eight bits or 16 bits and so forth. In this module, what we're gonna be covering is a little bit of a more efficient way to store, to store larger amount of data without necessarily using flip-flops and these are what we call memory arrays. So regardless of the memory array we're gonna be seeing is I want you to know the following, that these memory arrays are generally arranged in 2D arrays. So so you have a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. So these are rows and these are col and, and, and columns, of course, you can have them. Okay, the, the way you store a single bit within these different memory arrays, the physical electronic um, components that you actually construct or the way you're actually storing the ones and zeros is what distinguish between the different types of memory. However, all of them, regardless of the type, they kind of, you can actually interact with them in the same way. So how do you interact with them? Well, you generally speaking, you specify some sort of an address, okay, like a certain patterns of ones and zeros, and you have n bits in here. So let's assume that here, what you did is you decided like, okay, I want one zero one zero, basically row number five. Okay, what you're doing is you're gonna go in here and gonna tell me one, two, three, four, and five. That's basically the row I'm interacting with. You activate that particular row, and now you can interact with that particular row in here. So interacting or accessing that particular row, I mean, you can either read into it, read from it or write into it. And you usually do the read or write through something we call a data port. And in this particular case, I have M particular bits. Okay, so the output is M bits. That means I have one, two, three, four, all the way to M columns. All right, so to give you an example, um, what you, you might see is the following. You, you will see something that is, uh, the address is 10 bits. So if you take two to the power 10, that means you can have up to 1024 words. Some memory arrays might have a little bit less, but generally speaking, if you have 10, um, let's, you're gonna have up to 1024. And that basically goes from zero, one, two, all the way to 1023, which is two to the power n minus one, okay? All right, so generally you can see that these memory arrays will be referred to as 1024 because they have 1024 rows times, and it depends on the number of bits that the data port has. So in this particular case, the data port is 32 bits. So this one here is usually called um, 1024 times 32. You can actually specify that it's 1000 word, 1024 word times 32 bit, or you can just write it as 124 times 32 bit. And if you think about it, a 1024 is generally it's kilo, and this one here is bit. So this here specify a 32 kilo bit memory array. And that's basically what it specifies. Okay, so let's see an example of how we can actually access, and let's let's start with the read. How can we access a certain memory uh, row, and how does this happen? So what I'm what I have in front of me here is the following. I have an array, and this particular array for the, for the exam for the simplicity, I basically chose a very small one. You can see that this particular array has one, two, three, four. So I can say that it's basically four times, and it is one, two, and three basically bits. So it's four times three array. Okay, so sometimes these four and the three have different terms. So you can see that the number of rows you have for a memory array is called depth. So you usually say, okay, I want depth times um, and the number of bits for each word is actually width. Okay, and I called it word now, which is a row. So generally speaking, a row has multiple bits in this particular case of three. I can say that each row is a word and that word uh, is constructed using three bits, okay, or a three bit Word. So how do I actually get access to a certain particular memory location? Let's assume that I want to read something and whatever I want to read, let's say, let's say that I really want to read this particular row in here. So what you do is you say, okay, well, it's address is zero one. So I'm going to put zero one on the address. And then after, after a certain period of time and after certain signals, in a very simplistic way, you're going to see that the one one zero gets out on the data port. And this way you actually read that particular location in the memory array. Similarly, you can see that maybe you want to write into a specific memory location. So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna do this in green and let's assume that I really want to write in this particular memory location, which is one one. Okay, and the data, the data I wanna write, let's assume, let's change it to one one one, just for the sake of simplicity. So what you do now, um, I don't need these anymore. I'm actually writing. So you can see is one one one, you specify, generally speaking, you specify the data first, and then you give it the address, okay? And effectively what you're doing is you're overwriting this particular location by one one one.
Okay, and that's basically you wrote into that particular row or over that word. And this is how you interact with these memory arrays. Of course, this, whatever I showed you is a very simplistic way. You might have enable signals, write enable, write read enable, whatever you want to do. But in general, this is how we do it. So all of these memory arrays, um, they differ. They differ. The technology is different by the way you actually construct or the way you actually store each one of these bits. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that each one of these bits is stored in what we call a bit cell. Okay, so we have a bit cell and the bit cell can actually store one and zero. And the different types or the different electronics or physical elements that construct that bit cell will constitute a different memory. So we're going to see RAM and ROM and so forth. Okay, so how do I get access to a certain bit cell? And the bit cell could be flip-flop if I wanted to. Well, what you need to do is you need to activate that bit cell and then you can access it. So how do I activate it? What you're gonna see shortly is these bit cells are gonna be arranged in a 2D array. And in order for you to activate certain bit cells, what you do is you activate something we call a word line, okay? So we're gonna have a word line in here and that word line, uh, it will have other bit cells connected to it too. And these bit cells will form the whole row. But for now, what I want you to know is that particular word line, what it happened is actually it activates that particular bit cells and potentially more. Okay, but let's assume for the sake of simplicity, we're just like taking a look at one of them. Okay, so it's activated. By activating it, meaning it is actually allowing it to go its inputs or outputs through the bit lines in here. If it is not activated, what I want you to think about is the following. These bit lines are physically connected by wires to, this, to the bit cells, but generally speaking, internally, there you can think about them as high impedance or in, 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 in Verilog terms, basically we have Z. It's actually disconnected or high impedance. So it's as if it's disconnected when the word line is not activated. So by activating it, you're effectively, I want you to think about it as if you actually connected that bit, particular bit cells to the bit line. So let's see how it's organized in a, in a 2D memory array. So what we have in here is the same memory array that we've seen, which is the four in terms of depth and three in terms of width, and it has the same exact data, the, the bits, the pa bit pattern that we've seen. And what you see in here is they're organized in bit cells in rows, okay? So if you want to access, let's assume that you wanna access this particular row, what you do is you activate it, you activate that particular word line. And the way you activate that word line is as simple as implementing this particular decoder. So on this decoder, what you do is you put on its address, this is the address for the memory. Okay, you put one zero, and what happens is like if you remember a decoder is just activate one of its outputs, so it will activate this output and it will assert it. Let's assume it's one. So you're going to see that one will be on this wire, and one will activate this particular bit cell, this particular bit cell, and this particular bit cell. And now I can access it. So if I was reading, all you're going to see is the following you're going to see that these particular patterns here, which is ones and zeros, will just basically that one will be here, that zero will be here, and that zero will be here, and I'll take these to the data port that I have and I have effectively read that particular row or that particular word from the memory cell. Similarly, you might have something um, that you want to write into this particular location. Maybe you want to overwrite this one and what we did is we wrote 111 in here. So what you do is the following. You put 11 that effectively activate this particular word line. So you're going to see that this one here activates. So it activates this particular bit cell, this particular bit cell, this particular bit cell. However, if we do it this way, it will technically read whatever on the data port is. This is why we should probably just put whatever we want first. So what I want to do here is I want to put one, one and one. And then I will actually put the one, one address in here, which activate that and it activates in here and connects it. And what you can see is this particular line in here gets in, this one that gets in, in here and this one gets in in here and now you can actually overwrite this particular material in here or that particular row okay so this is how we read and write into memory location so in general what i want you to look at it is i want you to look at it this way you're effectively interacting with this memory array in the following matter what you have is you have a big box in here Okay, and you can think about it, you have an address port in here and a data port in here. Of course, in the read and write, I wrote one here and one here, but it's the same, effectively it's the same. It's, it's the same wire, whether you read it from the top or the bottom. I just basically for simplicity and to distinguish, I wrote it in the top and the bottom. So the memory cells we have, or the memory arrays we have seen, um, they constitute um, just one port. You can either read or write into that one port. You can do both at the same time. And as it turns out is you might have a memory array that you can access in several ports. And a port actually is a way to access that memory port. So in this here, in this example, what I'm showing you here is I'm hiding the 2D array inside. I'm hiding every, all the details and all the decoders and whatnot. What I want you to know is the following. This particular memory port or memory array 
has several ports. So I have a port called A1 or port one, let's call it. And that particular port one, I will, I'm actually reading. So you specify a certain address in here. It will put that data that you read from that particular address in here. And you might have another one in here. You put a different address and you're going to read it in here. And these two happen at the same exact time. So you're reading simultaneously completely different two rows. And at the same time, you might also want to write, so this particular memory port also have a third port, which is A3 or port three. And you specify basically the data you want to actually write, you put it in here, and then you specify the address you want to write. And then what you do is you issue a write enable. So the write is a little bit different than the read. This is what you're going to see shortly. And in, in that, it has a write enable. So you specify the address. When the address is ready, when the data is ready, then you issue a write enable, a very short write enable, which overwrites um, that particular memory array that you want. All of this particular memory array has three ports. It's called a three port memory array. And the reason why is because it has three ports, two read as you can see in red and one write as you can see in blue. Uh, as a designer, you might have a question like what happens if I'm trying, let's assume that I put the address in here and the address in here and they happen to be the same. Basically, you're trying to read and write from the same exact memory location. Well, it's up to you as a designer to figure out what to do. Should you forbid this? Should you um, maybe read the previous, uh, the previous value and then write into it? Or should you write first and then read? It's up to you as a designer, but 